going on everyone, Jax here. And today, this is a quick review of the 2022 Genesis G70. Now, to say Genesis has been on a roll lately is, you know, kind of putting it mildly. It seems like every model that comes out gets increasingly more gorgeous. And if it's not just downright gorgeous, it's really interesting looking. But the G70 was one of the first, like, really serious Genesis products where they were trying to take the fight to the German sort of sports sedan establishment. You know, like the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C Class, Audi A4. You've got the Cadillac. Well, now they're called the CT4, CT5, whatever dumb crap they have. And you also have the new Acura TLX Type. S. And I reviewed the G70 a while back, link is in the uh, description of this video, and I really, really liked it. I liked it a lot. And this car has garnered a lot of praise from the automotive press because unlike many cars that claim to be 3 Series competitors, the G70 actually kind of is a 3 Series competitor, especially the sort of old school 3 Series with its dynamic sort of reputation for handling and just blending performance and practicality. I really like that G70. Now, this is the new 2022 updated model, which means it has skin grafts on its face and hiney, where they've sort of applied the new Genesis look. And it, it kind of works. I thought the old one looked really nice, to be honest with you. But of course, they had to bring it into line with their new styling direction. And it honestly works better than you would think for a facelift. The lighting elements look cool. It's in line with the family. Now, the mechanicals are basically the same, which means you get a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 engine, making 365 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque, which is healthy. That's running through an eight speed automatic transmission with a mechanical limited slip differential in this sport model. This is the highest sport model you can get, which means it has a whole bunch of nice luxurious features. It's got the 10.3 inch infotainment display, which I think is very right sized for this vehicle. I like this 10.3 inch display. It's big enough that it looks premium, but it's not like so big that it's kind of dominating the dash. It's plenty legible. The surround view cameras that come with this higher trim look fantastic. It's, it's a really nice display. Now we're gonna turn onto the handling road and I'm gonna put this into sport mode. And the reason I'm doing that is because comfort mode in this car is generally excellent. It is a fantastic blend between athleticism and sort of cosseting comfort. It rolls the edges off sharp impacts. It feels really good, but sport mode noticeably firms things up. So we're gonna take this first washboard section here in sport mode, and it's firm, but not unpleasant. Totally livable. And I'm gonna come around the first turn right here. It's sharpish. Some body roll, but to be honest with you, not a lot in day-to-day -day driving. This would feel plenty aggressive, plenty good. I mean, even sport mode is pretty comfortable. What the most sort of Germanic thing about this car is, is the way that it sort of keeps its composure while the suspension is doing its thing on this terrible road. We got the big bump coming up here. I'm gonna hit it. Oh my gosh, that was like pfft, nothing. And we're in sport. Yeah, the sophistication of the G70's suspension is, is one of its most impressive features. I also like the fact that there's a meaningful difference between comfort mode and sport mode. Now, you can tell the transmission. Oh, that engine sounds good. It sounds really good. Who knew that Genesis would come right out the gate swinging with these fun engine sounds. I'm, I'm sure they're enhanced, but man, it sounds good. It has kind of a nice whoosh to it, but it gives you enough of that mechanical growl to feel kind of like substantial. Like, yes, it's a V6 under the hood, but this thing is ready to play. 
The transmission is a little hunty in sport mode. It's like it always wants to try to impress you. And so at low speeds, that can come across as a little like hunty. You know, eight speeds is a lot to swap through. Um, comfort mode, you don't really get that. It is completely invisible and goes about its business perfectly. But I feel like in sport mode at part throttle or low speed, it's constantly like downshift now or, or later. Downshift, you want one now? Did, did you want the downshift now? I can give you the downshift now if you want the downshift now. And you know, that's, that's a little annoying when you're driving around town. So I would just put it in comfort and then bring this out when you're ready to rock and roll. Another thing that I haven't mentioned so far is how good this steering is. It's a really nice balance between serious and fun. It's extremely accurate, which is again, very impressive. Genesis kind of jumping right into the sports sedan game. Very accurate steering. It feels nice, has a good weight to it. It weights up some in sport mode, but not like, you know, cartoonishly. The wheel feels good. The materials in general in this cabin are excellent. This car is $52,000, and I think that is absolutely appropriate with what it can do and what Genesis is trying to do undercutting the Germans and well, you know, the CT5, if you option it up, I think it gets a 60 pretty quick. Oh, another thing that I didn't mention about sport mode that I love, and it's just a bit of theater, when you engage sport mode, these side bolsters, they squeeze you a little bit tighter. And that's just a cool attention to detail. Bravo, Genesis, because that is exactly the kind of thing I want out of a luxurious sports sedan. I want that kind of attention to detail. You know what? I think we really need to hear that engine again. It is meaningfully quick. It doesn't have quite the same higher kind of tone that the Supra engine does, but it has that turbo, like that minuscule lag as the turbo spool and then it just catapults you forward. It is a really, really good engine. I mean, a really good engine. And it really helps make this car feel special. I mean, I just really like this car. It just makes you happy because if you were to spend your own money, your own 52 grand on this car, you feel like you're really getting something from it. I, I really also like the fact that the transmission when it's in sport mode, it gives you a little, it gives you like a little, little punch instead of being in comfort mode where you don't even know that it's an eight speed automatic. It might as well just be uh, in a CVT in the background. Like it's not that that's bad, but it's, it's just so invisible. But in sport mode, it gives you that little pow, pow, pow like when you like, downshift down, poo, like in the back, boom, you know? And I just think that Genesis is doing such a good job paying attention to those kind of things because those are the things that really elevate the experience. Again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna address uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, and it is by far the worst part of this car Sorry, Genesis, the brakes suck. They, the, the consistency of the brakes, not the power. If you wanted to slam on the brakes on these things, the Brembos, this one has the Brembo brakes, they will bring you to a stop and plaster your face to the windshield. But the consistency of the feel in the brakes is super annoying. The same exact pedal pressure yields some stopping, most of the stopping, or all of the stopping whether you're at low speeds or high speeds. Now I will say at higher speeds, like it, when I was doing what I was doing just now, it's not nearly as bad. But at low speeds, when you're in sort of day-to-day -day trundling around, stop and go traffic, the brakes just, they never give you the same amount of stopping power. And because this thing can stop very quickly, it, it gets a little frustrating. And it's frustrating because this car is so good in so many, ways. In fact, most of the ways. It's so good. Are there any other downsides to the G70? Mm, the other big one would be space. You might be able to see me and be like, but wait a second, you're always saying that you're six foot six and your driving position looks absolutely perfect. And you would be correct. This driving position is absolutely perfect. But you know what isn't perfect is the half a human that would have to sit behind me. There is literally no space behind this seat. And that might not affect you if you're, you know, 5'9", five 5'10", five that might not be an issue. But if you are over six feet tall, and many of you probably are, 
then the person behind you better be like an infant, not a normal person, because there is not a ton of space in this cabin for rear seat passengers. Another minor quibble I have is that the gauge cluster is it's just kind of like boring. I feel like we're in this place now where unfortunately, to compete in this premium and luxury segment, you need to have a, a lot of digital kind of gauge cluster gimmickry going on. Some of it is good and some of it is bad. You have some of the cool ones, like some of the stuff Audi does, and then you have some of the bad stuff, like I think BMW's kind of current gauges are sort of ugly. But Genesis's gauges are kind of like fine, you know? You've got this sort of analog speedo to the left, I just think that the center screen is kind of wasted. There's like never a whole lot on it at one time. Although when you have it in the car mode and you turn on sport mode, the little uh, bumpers on the side, the curbing turns to red and white like it's on a racetrack. And I mean, that's cool. But you know, where you have the Acura TLX, it has Acura's newer system in it, and you have that little digital view of the car, and there's little attention to detail, like the tail lights lighting up when you brake and stuff like that. In the Genesis, it doesn't do that. Um, you do get the digital side view mirror, which is helpful. I think that that should be in every car. But I mean, overall, this is a gorgeous car in wrapped in and i love this color combo by the way the sort of himalayan gray i believe it's called himalayan gray that kind of deep metallic gray the paint is gorgeous the black wheels look superb i love the overall look of this car i love the proportions of it it really does have that kind of like early 2000s german sports sedan hold on i need to do this Zero to 60 is in like 4.9 seconds or thereabouts. And uh, yeah, it feels it. Cause that was zero to more than 60. Don't worry, I'm on the interstate. So should you buy a Genesis G70? I would have to say yes. I do think that this is gonna get cross shopped against some pretty stiff competition. And that is totally fine. I think it can stand on its own merits. I also think one of the coolest things about this car is the fact that it is a Genesis. And Genesis is doing such a good job making gorgeous, interesting, and let's be honest, sort of value proposition luxury vehicles. Now, I'm sorry that I can't tell you when I say, should I spend my own money on this car? I can't tell you for sure because I have not driven some of the other uh, recent competitors to this car. So I haven't driven the CT5. I haven't driven the TLX Type S. Um, I actually haven't driven the updated uh, three or four series or the C. You know what? I haven't driven any of the new German sports sedans. Come on, Germans, send me some more cars. So yeah, I really enjoy this car. I'm not gonna give you a firm yes or no on it because I can't say for sure. And that would be disingenuous and that's not what I'm about. But is it a good car objectively? Yes. Guys, if you like this video, please consider hitting like. Please consider subscribing to the channel. I love chatting with you guys in the comments because car people and motorcycle people always have opinions and I love the conversations that come out of them, even when they might be a little unpleasant. Not that anyone on my channel is ever unpleasant at all, but nor I. I am never unpleasant in my opinions about cars. But if you made it this far in the video, comment down below what you think about Genesis in general. Do you think that they are an upstart luxury brand worthy of consideration? Or are you just completely biased and will only look at the Germans in terms of luxury? I'm curious to know what you think. And until next time, ride safe, definitely drive safe if you're driving something like this. And I will see you in the next video. Got my Georgia shirt on because, you know, undefeated, just saying.